now. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Couch Boy Mental Health Matters. This is your boy Damien here. What's going on? What's going on? Got my co-host over there, Jackie. Damn it, Jackie. Hello, you know, everyone. The, the star of the evening last night, you know, making her debut on cha- what was the channel. What? Um, Fox 46. Fox 46, Good yeah. Good day, Charlotte. Not, not Fox News, right? Good day, Charlotte. Not Fox News. Okay. No. But she definitely made, made, made a big entrance in a big way. Very proud of her, definitely. And of course, in the middle, we got our couch family here. You know, this is like third, fourth time coming to this joint. He's he part yeah. of the third, show. The third time. He part of the show. I'm back. He's back. <laughs> you know, Dr. Kendall Jaffa, psychologist. I mean, yeah. To the stars and all that. Now I get off. Yeah, I, I added on that part. Yeah, you, you, you but did you that. are. Good, bro. You, you, you're a celebrity in this bit. Now I get off. <laughs> not you are. I'm a celebrity, but I don't know how to work the social media. So hold on. Yeah. Wait, wait, Jackie, how am I sharing this? Okay. Work me through that system. Yeah. Right post. Yeah, yeah. What you want to say. Mm-hmm. So definitely we're gonna let our family come on in a little bit on your on your ride home. You know, we're here each and every Wednesday and Sunday at 2 p.m. for sure. So uh we're gonna go ahead and get started, you know. And we always do like every week, Dr. Jasper, we do like a mental health check-in. Okay. See how everybody doing. Okay. Now, and since you're the guest today, I'm gonna go ahead and let you get it started. How am I doing today? Checking mm-hmm. in. You know, one to ten. I don't know how you scale with your clients I, or what um, have you. I am doing okay today. I had a very interesting day. Okay. Today. It's very interesting. It ended quite interesting, it, Well, it? actually, it, it started off, it ended very interesting. It started off, I uh, spoke at my kids' school today. Oh, okay. wow. So I had okay. like a five minute talk with them. Shout out to Collinswood Language Academy and okay. the staff. Orbit Collinswood, oh, yeah, principal, Miss Raw, you know, Skelly Bar. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hold on. There's a lot of interesting people out there. We don't kind of let them know exactly where they are. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, no, it was great. Talked to the 7th yeah. and 8th graders today. Okay. Very inspiring. Cool. Uh, their ambassadors talked before I talked. And, the, the, you know, it, it was great, man. So that started my day off. That was interesting. And uh-huh. the day kind of brought me back to reality a little bit. <laughs> and towards the end of the day. Uh, but we were able to work through it. Which okay. is always important. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we were. And yeah. end on a, on a very more high professional note you know so tomorrow did it end on a high professional note? I thought it did I don't know I don't I, you know okay I thought it did it, right. I mean it could have been it was higher. higher than how it started <laughs> yeah we were in the basement uh, we, we ended up on the third floor on the third okay. floor okay well that's cool Jack what's going on star you know Fox got the spotlight on her you know what I'm saying? Doing big things and it's all good. It's all love for sure. Well, Most definitely. I think we both caught that um, this past weekend. Mine just started out the week that way, but it was nice to go to the gala and to see you nominated. Um, and even though you didn't win the concept I always of win. The congratulations, couch, by the way. Yes, I appreciate, the, I appreciate the opportunity to take uh, The concept so. of the couch is a groundbreaking idea, and so um, you were recognized for your contribution to the field of mental health um, in part for that, so that is worth um, mentioning again. And so with what happened with the news and everything, that was exciting i mean it was exciting but as you all know to be a part of a field where you pour everything you have into it for years and years we in our field don't always see real recognition Mm -hmm. and i i was just i'm not going to lie and say it didn't feel nice to be recognized at least for what i feel like i've contributed for a lot of years and i feel like now i'm kind of in my lane as far as being very comfortable speaking on a more public platform about issues in mental health the show has made that even easier and um helped me to really figure out where i want to go with that and so i'm glad that i was invited and i it was a really good experience to have yeah Mm -hmm. you know having that platform having this platform can you know take you to higher heights and you know Hey, I can just say that I know her first. She was with me first, so you know, we always like that. that, that have first. Well, who said that song? That was like a song, right? Was I, it Ray J? Ray J said it about. <laughs> yeah, I but know, but it, no, we're not. He gonna said go it about there. Kim Kardashian. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna go there. But the thoughts you know. of Damien Harmon are that of Damien Harmon alone, and not shared by those. <laughs> 
So yeah, so there was that, and then there was the um, event at the Dunn event last night, right, uh, right. which you came Pretty to. Dope. Thank you for coming out yes. to support. But it was a networking event where we had half the restaurant um, to focus on mental health awareness month, and then mm -hmm. I was uh, an honoree there. So you know, it was fun to be there, and then there to be a very candid conversation about right. mental health, where the guests were able to chime in with questions. I just kind of opened the floor to questions anyone had about mental health, and we had mm -hmm. all kind of chiming in by different practitioners and individuals who deal with more the pharmaceutical side of mental health and all kinds of stuff. So it was, right. it was great. I was Absolutely. glad to have that. I appreciate it, yeah. definitely. Um, for me, today has just been like a, a really busy day. I normally don't do a whole lot on Wednesdays because of the show, but for some reason today I had back-to-back -back clients and I wasn't done until probably 3, 3.30, which is a pretty long day for me. So I'm kind of mentally exhausted, have some really high maintenance clients today. So um, forgive me if I don't seem like myself today. But it is what it is, I'm here. I'm happy though. I'm here too. I'm happy. But you know, like, like you said, like the weekend and the beginning of this week has been pretty dope, you know, with the Mental Health Awareness Gala, the Mental Health Awareness Walk. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier that morning, it was really good to see a lot of vendors and a lot of stakeholders and a lot of community organizations out there, you know, contributing to a cause and raising awareness. Um, that was definitely a, a good look uh, for Ustress Strength. Um, shout out to Rayshawn and Ustress for putting on a great evening, a great mm -hmm. morning, a great weekend pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and again, shout out to you, Jackie, for being on TV, you know, your event yesterday, was, it was definitely dope for sure. So I'm Thank happy you. about all those things. Mm -hmm. I, I feel good in that aspect, um, mm -hmm. definitely. So, you know, it's dope. I like it. And Jasper's been in the media a lot, so we just can skip over him today. No, I'm, This isn't highlighting Jasper's no, on TV. I, 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 Jasper I'm has good. been on multiple radio shows and, and on television and in the spotlight, so... Um, we're just going to turn the shine down on the head today. Not at all. And uh, I'm here to, you know, we're going to skip right over that. I'm, I'm here to Well, help. the head is shining. There's no shine. Okay. The head is shining. Yes. I, I, it's catching no you on, on the, like on your the soul stream up. there. <laughs> so good. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Right. Anyway, right, I'm right. glad that um, all this attention is being drawn to mental health. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said on the show, it, it shouldn't be Mental Health Awareness Month. It should mm -hmm. be every day of yeah. the year, you know, making sure that we're taking care of ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, all those things, spiritually as well. So it's a good look. I like mm -hmm. it. So again, shout out to you just for giving me this t-shirt. Definitely promoting God. Where my shirt, Sean? <laughs> well, he did send me one before the walk. Mine said, common sense ain't so common. And I can't wait to wear it next Everybody. week on the show. Because I saw him wear it on something he was doing on social media. Right. And I immediately texted him and said, I have to have it. And he told me, I have it in your size. And so he mailed it to me. Well, so. My shirt, dog team. Thank you, Rashawn. Thank you. Yeah. You know, blessings so. on blessings. You know. Uh, so it's all good. So mental health trending topic, Jack. What we got for the day? Well, I kind of wanted us to discuss the mental health crisis special that came on the news mm -hmm. last night, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, where they were discussing mental health in schools mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Right. Personally, I did not watch the special. I want to discuss the topic. Yeah. So their title yeah. of the special, I want to get into that and right. our various professional opinions about what this quote-unquote crisis is they could be talking about in schools yeah. and your opinion about what's going on in schools and mental right. health. And I mean, I guess just to backtrack really quick, they're going to actually have a, like an hour-long special mm -hmm. Um, regarding mental health, I think it's on the 29th, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Um, Ray Sean will definitely be featured on there. We oh, will really? walk in the gala, okay. um, uh, and amongst a host of other mental health advocates mm -hmm. and people in power um, that are doing some really good things in the community. So um, look out for that. I think it's on Channel 9. Um, okay. I forget the time of it, but it's an hour long. I think it's from like 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., something like that. So definitely look out for that. You may get a glimpse of some people that you know um, on there as well. Okay. But back to your your, your comments and your and your question and your topic. Um, personally, I mean, I've done school-based therapy since the inception of it here in CMS, which have, which has been what maybe five or six years. Um, 
and I don't think it's necessarily a crisis. It's a crisis for them now because they're starting to realize, okay, you know, it's a lot of individuals, a lot of students, whether it's children, adolescents, you know, young children that have issues outside of, you know, just behavioral issues mm -hmm. and they get suspended or what have you or having to be referred to another uh, level, of care. level of care, whether that's alternative, what is the turning point or something like that. Or but, day treatment. Or day treatment. Mm -hmm. But ARJ. 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 Shout out. Seamus 2311 Village Lake Drive. <laughs> yes. Dope program, you guys. We are here to care for your children's needs. Dope. They do really good work. Where I currently serve sure. as clinical director. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but 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 back but back but back to my comment though. Like for me, I don't think I don't think it's a crisis. It's not a crisis because it's been going on for a long time, mm -hmm. and it's just really getting the awareness. And I can remember when we first started the school-based program. You know, CMS was like, well, we'll cover every child. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever child needs to be no referred. No child left behind. No child left behind in regards to mental health services. Mm -hmm. But when they got the floodgates, That's you know, true. you're getting like 50, 100 kids in each school. And you know how many schools are in CMS? They're like, oh, like, bluff, bluff, bluff. wait a minute. No, we're not going to cover all oh, this. Yeah. It's not in the budget. Yep. That's so, all they talk about is budget. Yeah. So it wasn't in the budget. So they cut pretty much that part of the program. They still had it, but you had to meet certain criteria. Mm -hmm. Or you had to be, you know, have Medicaid or the parents had to come out of pocket to pay their copay for private insurance. So for me it's 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 always been a crisis. It's just now that okay it's mental health awareness month, you know, things are happening, shootings, you know, at UNCC and things like that, you know, it now it's really a problem. For them. There always has to be something major and tragic happening in order yeah. for any kind of movement to take place, and I resent that. But, Jasper? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't like when I call you Jasper. What do you want me to call you on the show? <laughs> I call him Jasper in real life yeah, all the know. time, wow. all day, every day. Well, here's, what do you want me to call you say. on the show? It's, First, tell us what you, how you want to say. It does. Jasper. Kendall Jasper, Dr. Jasper, KJ. I respond. I respond to all of that. So here's what I'll say. On Instagram, shameless. Yeah. At Dr. Oh, I'm sorry. At Dr. That's what we Okay, go ahead. So listen, it's been a crisis for a long time, right? The dilemma that we're seeing is the idea that there's being more conversation about mental health and the idea that people need to better manage what's going on, but we've been mis misguided, excuse me, in you know, the, the manner in which we go about treating or looking at mental health as right. mm -hmm. important, mm -hmm. right? So we talk a lot about physical health. <coughs> excuse me. So we talk a lot about physical health. And for a long time, we talk about physical health without even a mention of the mental health right. associated with those physical health issues. Mm -hmm. One does not exist without the other, right. period. So now that we're starting to catch up some, or it's becoming sexy to have a conversation so about mental health right. for various reasons, Okay. Yes. right? What mm -hmm. we're finding is we've been understaffed and haven't had the ability to manage the current issues that we're having with people with okay. mental health issues mm -hmm. even before we got here. Right. So now it's worse because you have professional athletes, you have entertainers, you have dignitaries, you have so many people talking about how important their mental health is. And it's great. It is amazing. However, we aren't catching up. Right. Professionals aren't catching up. Mm -hmm. We can't keep up. Mm -hmm. Not only are we not able to keep up, not everybody that is a therapist is a good one. Shout can can, can, you, can you repeat can that you say one it again? more time? I'm just going to be I'm gonna certain be honest. people I would like to tag on this comment. So just go ahead <coughs> not, and say it again. Not every therapist is a good one. You know, it's with every profession. People underperform in their role. Yes. And therapists... Clinicians, psychologists, psychiatrists mm -hmm. are not exempt from that. Not only that, we are not here to treat everybody. Not every I'm not a good fit for everybody. Right. 
And I know that. I recognize it. So now we have to go down the path of trying to find someone that's a good fit for us. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you're in an area and you only have three or four individuals who you get to choose from and none of them are a good fit for you? What do you do? Where are you going? Who are you going to talk to? Right? More often than not, you're going to rely on people you have a respect for who may not have the training, the, the educational the background, and the access to the resources right. to actually help you. Right. Period. Absolutely. So it's been a crisis. Mm -hmm. But it's it, it's a lot of the gray area, right? It's we can't get we can't get behind mental health and the mental health issues like we get behind cancer and cancer research. They're viewed vastly drastically different in the right. marketplace. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? But I would venture to say that our, our mental health issues are just as, or if not more debilitating yes. than some of the physical ailments mm -hmm. that people have and experience. Right. Period. And we can argue about that all day. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that we experience every day. People experience this every day. In some instances, in a lot of instances, the advancements in cancer research and some of the other physical illnesses are able to save lives, mm -hmm. help people better manage it. Mm -hmm. we, we can't, we're, we're having a difficult time keeping up with everybody that's popping up saying I'm depressed, anxious, have attention issues. Yeah, because it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. All the time. Reactive. It's it's everywhere. And the the other part of it is it's dirty work. Right? And I don't mean that to be facetious. Mm -hmm. Like uh -huh. you get you gotta get down and dirty. And dirty with folks. Right? Yes. If mm -hmm. if you want to express to them that you care, you express that sentiment, I care, I care about you, I care about your well being. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you go gotta get you gotta go where they are, you gotta meet them where they are. Yeah. And everybody's not built for that. Right. Can I speak? I mean now we just it's just flowing. So I I had a there was a structure. You may here. speak. I told you how I felt about that before the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have issues with that. I have deep rooted issues with that. Um, okay, so I had a client. Um, I had a client today. She's a great person. However, she's battling some very serious things at home. And I found that she was talking over the questions that I was asking to provoke thought in her about her own statements, okay? Mm -hmm. And at some point, and I i mean, like we've talked about the type of therapist we are, the type of work we do. I'm very honest on the show about how I approach my clients and right. I have no, I don't hold back at all. So basically when I realized she was doing that, I said, stop. And then she kept talking and I said, no, you have to stop. And then she kept talking and I said, your anxiety is having your defense mechanism. This is a defense mechanism. You don't want to hear what I have to say, even though you were here to talk to me. You're mm -hmm. railroading over me because you're not ready. Right. And she stopped and then she started crying. Yeah. And I said, you know, I care about you. I know this might sound harsh, but you have an issue with dealing with what's on the surface because you feel like it took you years to get to this point and you have lost something and you can't accept the process, but this is a process. And so we have to talk about the process and stop jumping ahead to the solution. Right. You're here to go through a process because you've been in a process. Mm -hmm. So let's just figure it out while we're here. Right. And it changed the whole tone of the rest of the session. You know, in those moments, I feel like I'm being harsh, but I, I also tell my clients, I know it sounds harsh, but I think you need it. And they always tell me, I do. Mm -hmm. Like, no one is giving me that when I'm talking about my problems and how sad I am. It's like, we're trying to comfort each other. We're trying to say, oh no, you can manage, you'll be okay. No, when you see people doing that, you have to stop them. I told her, I, if I have to, I'll go buy a stop sign from Dollar Tree like I did for the kids I saw 10 years ago, and I will hold it up. And she was like, no, please don't do me like that. I said, look, you know, I'm just going to tell you when you have to stop. Right. And, and she did, right. and so those are things, I, to me that was a down and dirty moment of, you know, I care about you, I will not let you continue you to do this to right. yourself you, you have to know now that you're doing that Absolutely. so I think it was necessary and I, I like that approach when I feel it's needed think about it this way in our own personal lives right there's, there are things that are a process for us right and, and people would think that we have it all figured out or we 
better understand because we're licensed mm -hmm. clinicians. We better understand people, how they operate, including ourselves. Mm -hmm. right? That may not always be the case. But even for us, sometimes we get frustrated with a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't like the process. Right? We want it to happen now. Right? Your show is a process. Yes. Right? Yes. You want to grow this show to certain heights. And it gets frustrating sometimes because maybe we didn't get the viewership today that we were looking for, right? Or the responses. But it's a process. Mm -hmm. And you come back to it every day. Some things you say, listen, man, I'm tired of this process. I'm gonna put it down. Right? I don't want to deal with it anymore. Right. Right? It's too time consuming. It takes too much effort. I don't really want to change. It's difficult to change. I'm, I'm into this habit. I'm kind of in my pocket with it a little yeah. bit, right? So I don't have the incentive there to change, right? right? And I don't want to deal with the process. It's no different. Everybody deals with that. And dealing with your mental health issues, dealing with having strong mental health pra practices is a process. Yes. yes. Right? On top of that, I don't like what I'm hearing. I don't like the people that I'm seeing. I'm just keeping it up. I'm just yeah. keeping it up. I'm keeping it up. Right. Real. Got yes. to. Right? Always. I don't like what I'm hearing. So now either. I'm making excuses as to why I shouldn't participate. Mm -hmm. The other piece of it is I don't know where to go, how to get started. And then you look at us as, as black folks in our community, specifically. Mm -hmm. There ain't enough real ones. Right? And if they are the real ones, then they're stretched. Okay. Because, no, 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 no. because you can't get a bag doing this in most situations, right? Okay. What I mean by yes. the bag, I mean like Money. you're not getting filthy rich doing this unless right. you are working as at this place doing this, doing you might have three or four jobs. Okay, wait trying a minute. to chase. Let's so let's, oh go ahead. A lot to unpack, I'm sorry. I said no, that. it's it triggers another part of this segment. What he go said. Ahead, go ahead, go it does. I mean, when he's okay, so let's deal with this now because this goes straight into the topic. We were just going to touch on the reasons people don't go to therapy. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of taking us there yeah, when he's absolutely. saying, "Hey, there's not a there's not a bag here that you're just gonna that's gonna fall on you when you become a therapist." That's not true. But one of the main reasons people are saying in the comments. Uh, that we received before the show that they're not going to therapy is because of high insurance deductibles um, Also the fact that therapy costs a lot of money. I know I've done my own research on You know practitioners uh, therapists outside mm -hmm. of us um, mm -hmm. I don't I have not done research on us as individuals mm -hmm. in this room But I'm looking at other people and I researched it and people are starting at $120 an hour And I wanted to talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. because I have my own feelings about what I charge and I'm not quiet about what I charge my clients. I often bend and scale depending right. on what people can afford and right. I have never started someone at $120 an hour because personally I don't feel like it's realistic to make people feel like they're being financially broken when they're coming to you for depression and anxiety. I don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. with it. It's not something I do. But I have colleagues that do and I feel right. like, hey, if that's what you're doing, that's perfectly right. fine. It's just not what I do. Right. But mm -hmm. I stretch depending on what the situation is. If there's a college girl who is depressed and she can't go out in public because she's so depressed and anxious about mm -hmm. what may happen, I know she cannot afford $75 a week. I'm not going to charge her that. I'm going to toss her something and let her toss something back, and we're going to figure out what can work for right. her. And I feel good about it, and that's where I sit with it. Right. So what about and, you? And I, and I think I kind of, I'm, I'm in that same boat because I've always been, as a therapist and prior to me becoming a therapist, always working for an agency. Hmm. Um, so the rates, quote unquote, is usually a, a Medicaid rate. Let's just say that. So, mm -hmm. well, they set the standard in most They, they, they mm -hmm. set the standard. So, my, my idea of, as far as people who are actually going to come in and pay out of their pocket for services, I'm very conscious of what I do uh, charge. Yep. Now, there is a, a balance between supply and demand on that. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have what do they call it, intellectual you know, property, and like that costs. You know That's what right. I mean? So and your time. And your time. So you definitely don't want to short yourself, but you also don't want to short the client that experience of learning what they need Sorry. to learn in order to mitigate, you know, uh, 
their their symptoms or behaviors or what have you. So there's a there's a fine line and like you said, scaling that client based on need, severity of their problems and what they can afford at that particular time. That that's always a juggle for me. And initially when I got into private practice and, and doing things for myself or, you know, having a practice you know, it was a struggle for me just to say, okay, at the end of the session, okay, which cards you gonna use? You know, or uh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like it, it, it was difficult for me, but at the same time, they realized the benefit of the service yeah. as well. You know, you you can put a price tag on it, but you can't. You, yes. you, you know what I mean? So so being able to vary in between you know, people who, who are struggling to make ends meet. Mm. Yes. And, and you hit it on the head as far as with insurance policies and mm-hmm. these high deductibles and high co-pays and insurance companies not really covering anything because you're not going to meet this 5000 deductible yes. in a year. So you're still paying out of pocket. So mm-hmm. I, I take a lot of that into consideration as okay. far as treatment for sure. And, uh, I strike a balance. I think you have to strike a balance because mm-hmm. um, you still have to support yourself, right? Right. And your family. So, it's, I'm gonna always real. make sure I, I do that. I certainly so think that you, if you have, a if you have a 65, 35, or a 55, 45, 70, 30, whatever you're comfortable with, mm-hmm. you say, okay, a certain amount of my time I'm gonna, I'm gonna give for less than what my value is right. to help. Right. But what you right. end up doing is, in most situations, doing a lot of that work for no pay whatsoever anyway. Mm-hmm. I don't know about y'all, but there are, yes. there are a lot of things that I do that- Over, Above and beyond. There isn't, yeah, there isn't a rate attached to it. Right. And right. I'm not doing that because, you know, I, I'm doing it because I genuinely well, you enjoy care. helping people. Right. Right, and right. that's, I think that's part of what I would like to think makes me good at what I do mm-hmm. because I have a, a concern for the individual, the family, the couple, whoever's sitting across from me. Right. And, I, and I have a strong willingness to want to help. Mm-hmm. But you do have to strike a balance, okay. yes. right? Yeah, I, I, I stopped doing so much individual therapy because I was, one out of every three people wasn't showing up. Mm. Really? Yeah, I was, I'd have, okay. so I'd have to schedule like 40 people. Just in case. Just, just, yeah, just and, get 20. For the yeah, and if 20, just, but if 28 people showed up, mm-hmm. Like the last, sorry for those folks that were scheduled at the end because y'all were not getting the best of me, mm-hmm. right? Because right. I was Drained. burnt out yes. at that point. Yes. So I had to make a decision. I said, hey, listen, how do I work smarter and not harder mm-hmm. here? And how do I <laughs> how do I try to cast a wide web, bring other individuals in here to help? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we provide this mm-hmm. on more of a, a grand scale. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. There's the micro that's in there, but yeah, for macro. me, how do I move, mm-hmm. you know, detach myself from mm-hmm. the kind of grind of the everyday work right. and say, how do I look at this and say, okay, how can I provide a program where multiple individuals are in the room and mm-hmm. we can provide them, you know, you know, very similar treatment or a higher level of care. Right. You, you know what I mean? But right. at the same time, you have we have to be real and understand and know that people have to support themselves. Right. Right. So- what we're the consensus of what Jasper is saying is that we well the three of us can only speak for us because we're the only ones in the room so we collectively are, are actually making the same point is that we care about what our clients are going through and when you say to us this is unaffordable for me I believe all three of us will come from an angle of okay well let's talk about what's a little more reasonable for you right. for you to be able to get the kind of care you need mm-hmm. I know that personally you all probably do this from time to time but if someone gives me a certain rate and they're looking confused about whether they can do it every week I offer them bi-weekly why don't we just meet every two weeks but once a month I never recommend to my clients because I don't feel like once every four weeks or three weeks mm-hmm. is enough for helping them through their process right. okay so I don't feel like it's enough of um, caring for what the ailment is Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you have a physical ailment or a mental one, that's right. not enough. Right. You have to change uh, a bandage every couple days, actually, in mm-hmm. order for the wound to heal. But you want to come to therapy once a month thinking that you're just going to be okay. Right. So I would say that all of us you know, could lean towards that. However, we are still supporting ourselves. We, we, we don't have other full-time... Go ahead, Jasper. I was going to say, oh, we can barter. Let me borrow that, 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 that. Why could I let me feel, borrow that four, why eight, could I that feel you railroading over me? I felt like you, you didn't want to hear what I had to say. Would you let me get that 4K TV for a couple of months? 
Right, like, I'm I mean, like, if they... I'm just joking. I mean, it, it is yeah, kind of... Yeah, bartering services. I am a, you um, can do that. It is yes, not unethical to do so, but I, I'm just joking there. I'm, I don't want your TV. You might want free haircuts. I was going to say, what can I... Free haircuts for a month. I shave Gillette Fusion. Shameless But product. you all get the point. We have we get to survive bag, as well. This <laughs> is what we do. Yeah, this is what we do. Seven for, minutes. This is what we do for a living. So, right. you know, but when you find a good therapist, somebody who's actually genuinely concerned about your well-being, uh, they may stretch for you. They right. may slide a little bit. Sure. Right. There. Okay. They okay. should. There's that. They okay. should. You can have that as an expectation. Right. I just think that 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 can't be the expectation every day, but okay. it, it happens. All right. So, so another reason, and I, and I was actually in dialogue with someone um, earlier today about a reason it was just a post on facebook regarding mm -hmm. therapy and um he mentioned something about uh, you know somebody saying pray about it you know we always talk about that and one of the responses was that the guy said he went to therapy mm -hmm. and it wasn't for him it's not effective it's not going to work you know so on and so forth so one of those reasons for not seeking treatment may have been a bad experience and it goes back to what you were saying doc that not every therapist or clinician is built the same way you know just like a physical doctor or a girlfriend or whatever the case may be everybody is not the same and trying to explain that kind of got him in his emotions mm -hmm. um, and he said well I have my music and that's my therapy I don't need another person to tell me how to process things mm -hmm. throughout my life, you know, which dug into a whole mm -hmm. different conversation, but that's the ideology that some people have about therapy, like, are they seen it secondhand? Black people. Or, or, yeah, some black people shit, we mm -hmm. can say it. Mm -hmm. We talked about it last night at the event that came right. up. Somebody, we talked about it because somebody asked in the audience, what do you think about uh, prayer you know, what we talked about on one of the shows that I wasn't here, but you had a guest. And yeah. so prayer versus therapy and all that in the conversation it doesn't have to be verses, but it can work together just like medication and therapy. Like right. you can have your spiritual beliefs and still go to therapy. And so she asked last night what I thought about it. And I made a very um, short statement about the fact that, you know, when I have a foot ailment, I'm not going to my primary care physician. I am going to the foot doctor for a diagnosis on what he is trained in. Yeah, the podiatrist. Right. On what he's trained in and what he is educated in fully above the primary care physician. And if the primary care physician really wants to do their job well, they will refer me right. to the podiatrist. Is that what you mm -hmm. said? Mm -hmm. I should know that. Sorry, mom and dad. So, um, the, <laughs> what did I learn in my house growing up? So, the podiatrist. So, when you have an issue with spirituality and you're conflicted with things like that, I understand going to your pastor. When you have certain issues uh, with morality or things you're dealing with day to day and you feel like you can confide in the pastor, it's always comfortable to have somebody you can confide in. It doesn't matter whether it's your pastor or a teacher, mm -hmm. but if you have a mental health ailment, something that is preventing you from conducting daily activities in your life like you usually do, it's stunting right. you a little bit, you don't know which way to go, I suggest that you see a therapist who is trained in that field of study and expertise mm -hmm. in order to help you treat your problem. Right. And then you work with all those other avenues to help it get to the point where you want it to right. be. So then uh, my question is, right, with that being said, right, so the, the church is an institution for us, mm -hmm. right? And it's been an institution for us since we were we came to these shores. Right. Right. We were enslaved, we came to these shores. The church has been an institution for us. Right? And and we've made it our own. Right. We've taken what they have given us, their teachings, Christianity, because most of us weren't Christians when they came to our shores. None of us the were Christians. Education of the Negro. Were Christians when they came to our shores. Right. Um, but they gave that to us. Right? And they didn't necessarily give it to us in a nice way. They used it in some parts as in an effort to control yes, absolutely. the masses. But just like with anything else with most black folks, we take it, we remix it, we make it our own. Right. Right? Um, so that's a strong institution for us. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that we've been conditioned to believe is the way. And it's going to help us out of all of this darkness. Mm -hmm. Right? How many times have you heard your pastor, your bishop, 
You're are you changing you're your tone? Whatever. Right? They, no, but they've said that, right? They 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 just yeah, but they just just out of all this dogs. We'll talk. Yeah. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So you're absolutely right. So but we miss the mark on other things. Yeah. Right? So we can go to the church. Go see Reverend Paul Chop, whatever his name is. <laughs> right? We can go see him. PC, right? are you go, with me? We can go see him or her. Right. Right? But we have an issue with going to see other professionals. Right? So let's talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Right? More often than not, we go to churches and pastors and bishops and Deacons. spiritual daddy or whatever we want to call mm -hmm. them. Right? They look like us. Spiritual yeah. daddy. Right? If this is an all call. Mm -hmm. If we want for our folks to come home to see us, then we have to chase the profession. Yes. So when they walk in the room, right. they feel comfortable because, oh, he looks like me. She oh. looks like me. Right. Okay, that's part of the right? reason I think we all like to be ourselves when we approach yes. what we do. If Let me say, say that. I think Jasmine dresses like this all the time. You can't see the full outfit, but I remember when I asked you why, you know, we've had discussions about this and I wanted to know, mm -hmm. you know, I, coming in this into this profession, I always grew up seeing therapists portrayed a certain way. I mean, look at TV, movies, whatever. Right. They're right. wearing the business suits, they're wearing skirts and low heels and all that, right? And so if right. you remember, I don't even remember early conversations we had years ago where I watched in your office and I'm like, I don't understand. I didn't even know he was in charge. Like, yeah. I was just kind of like, am I meeting with you? And he's like, mm -hmm, I'm Dr. Jasper. And I was like, and he has Jordans on and shorts and... I didn't understand and over years yeah. you have helped me to understand that you can be yourself and still help people with what they need and then right. also it makes it can make people feel more comfortable right but being in our field as we all do now at this point everybody just comes out as themselves and whoever you mm -hmm. meet you meet us for who we are right, right. yes and I don't know about without disclosing right without getting into a room and disclosing a whole lot about yourself personally to someone you're seeing, right? You don't necessarily have to do that. Mm -hmm. However, I feel like it's very difficult to go into a room with someone and ask them to feel comfortable and be themselves if you're not comfortable mm -hmm. with being right. yourself. Right. Right? Because there's gonna, there's always there's already a distinction between you and I. Mm -hmm. You're sitting across from me, you're seeking my help, my yeah. professional help. Mm -hmm. Right? So that creates enough, enough. of a distinction, a okay. difference between us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, but I want, and this is me, it doesn't have to be anybody else. Right, right, right? right. I have to be comfortable in my skin and organic in the, the approach that I right. take in order for me to be effective. Yeah. Right? And if you are put off by mm -hmm. what I choose to wear, and some people are because they view it as a lack of professionalism. Right. Right? But you don't care. About You're that. not here for me, mm -hmm. I'm here for you. Right. Right? So as long as you're there and, yeah. and, right and what I don't understand is this right? When most people go to the doctor The doctor's wearing scrubs anyway The nurse is wearing scrubs like you But you know he got a PhD So you're just like okay Fam they're wearing yes, scrubs I feel like, In most no, no, situations it's, That's the reason It's instant visual gratification Okay. Right. Yeah that's it So when you go to the doctor and they got on their jacket And you go to uh, the surgeon's office Or right. you go to the hospital and people are walking around with scrubs Immediately there's that gratification The hierarchy in the hospital Who is that? What do they do? It's right. like this need we have uh, to know things and then to know someone sits above somewhere. So I understand, you, you know, it's not something, yeah. it's subliminal. Absolutely. It's not something that comes to mind immediately until someone brings it up. Like, oh, why why do you shift this way when right. somebody with scrubs walks down the hallway? Why do you stare a little longer? You're mm. wondering about their schooling. How long have they been a doctor? How old are they? Look at how they look. Oh, they're attracted to be a doctor. I mean, these are things that we're right. naturally thinking we do right. not admit mm -hmm. to. They don't come across on a daily basis, but yeah. you are right. And so I also want to tell you, being around the both of you, I mean, Damien's attitude too is kind of like, I don't care. And so I appreciate that because I've become more, uh, you know, just more open to 
look, this is, I'm going to be nice and neat, of course, and I'm going to wear right. clean clothes, but mm -hmm. I'm going to professionally just be me. And I have started saying in the first session, look, I often wear these wedge sneakers and my college sweater to these sessions. If it bothers you, I, I, I get it, but I don't. But if you would like to see someone else because of what I'm wearing, I right. will refer you to somebody else. But this is how right. I come for you. Right. Dress like you are dressed. Right. We are in our street clothes. Right. And we're going to get to the bottom of it. So if you think you're going to get better help from someone in a dress, yeah. then that's fine. And right. I mean, there's a time and place for everything, right? right. So I'm not showing up everywhere. We know that. I'm, like, I wasn't right. trying to say that. But right. what I'm saying is, is that Number one, I've worked hard enough. I feel like I've worked hard enough. And although I haven't arrived, I've worked hard enough to say, mm -hmm. I want to be comfortable in an environment that I've helped create. Yes. Right. Right, so I want to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, the other part of it is, is that I want, also want to be effective. Mm -hmm. You know, and and just, this is disclosure. Right, so I had a heart attack at 40. I had a mild heart attack at 40. Right? Um, so I have a medicated stint in my right coronary artery. So I'm going through the rehab, yeah. right? No, 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 okay. then. Yeah. So part of the rehab, of course, is physical rehab. They put you through the nutrition and then you also get to see someone, right? And you get to determine who you want to see. Psychiatrist, psychologist, life professional counselor, clinical social worker, whoever, right? Right. So I'm seeing someone and we're talking. And it, it, it's always been a source of contention for me with my dad about the way that I dress in the office, mm -hmm. right? Old school cat, he's 70 plus years old. Yeah. He's like, fam, but no. put some clothes on, Yeah. right? You know, Yeah. now mind you, with, this is amazing though. Mind you, if you saw my dad, right? If he walked in here today, D, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a Jizzle is a different kind of dude. Mm -hmm. Right. My man probably got a thong flip flops. Yeah. Right. He does. Some jeans, shirt buttoned down to here. He got a shirt right. on got with the gray jeans. No t-shirt. No, no, no t-shirt, right? Yeah. But right. that's him. Right. But, right. but what's crazy is all of my life he has preached to me the idea that you need to be an individual, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not all about what's on the outside. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. right? It, so I take that with mm -hmm. me. So me and the me and the, the clinician are talking, and the clinician is like, well, what's gonna make you more comfortable? And I'm like, well, listen, man, I don't want to go to work every day suited and booted. Right. And he was like, well, why do you have to? Mm -hmm. Right? Some of this is about you being comfortable yeah. in the environment right. to be the most productive. Absolutely. I think I am. I think I'm more productive because I come dressed the way I want to dress. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm able to be like, stop, stop. I mean, if I was in a different type of tight outfit mm -hmm. or whatever, you just, you don't realize the impact that your clothing even has on the way your body moves. You and, know what I'm saying? As and far and as I comfort. think, like, like for me, because of course you guys see, I have two sleeves, like tattoo sleeves. So for me, I, I get different responses from people that are like me. They they love it, you know. From the Fortune 500 person that works at Bank of America as like a VP or something like that, that's mm -hmm. coming to see me for the first time, and I'm just how I'm just I'm comfortable. My jeans, t-shirt, I may go on a polo every now and then. But for the most part, it's a t-shirt, jeans, sneaks. I'm, I'm, I'm cooling. I'm comfortable. Right. And that first instant, that first response that I get from them is like, wow. You know, like, you dress like this, but intellectually, you're, you're right over here. Like, shot. Or, or we're shot. All, like, like, yeah, like, shot. Like, we're, we're on the same level. And I, or... Or I'm kind of above you, but I'm coming to see you, like type of feel. That, that's what mm -hmm. I feel sometimes. But after that first impression, after that first session, they're like, you know, I totally had you misread. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go ahead and book me for five appointments, and I'll prepay type thing. You know. <laughs> okay. You know that type of thing, but you Green know what I mean. Green is so, for the money. But, Gold is for the honey. But but, <laughs> un but understanding that. You know, you're absolutely right. Being comfortable yes. in your own skin, okay. being aware of who you are and how you want to present your niche in this field. Everybody okay. should have a niche. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What what you're comfortable with, your expertise and how you want to deliver that. With me, I'm gonna have on my t shirt, I'm gonna get as many tattoos as I feel Listen, like. Okay. I have been and I'll end it this way. Okay, so then we can move on. I have been in meetings or situations where I have been dressed from top to bottom. Right. And it's still getting been treated like 
I wasn't even supposed was to be in the say. movie. Right. Okay, okay, man. Like, I'm just keeping it. Like, yeah. so nobody just, says okay. anything to me until the end. And they're like, well, where's Dr. Jasper? And I'm like, well, <laughs> nobody asked. Yeah. But I'm here. Right. So maybe I wasn't supposed right. to be here, but I'm I'm that guy. They're looking at you totally like, different. Oh, okay. Insert foot into mouth mm-hmm. now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, clearly... Some of it just okay. doesn't matter. Some of it, some of it is about something else, other than how I'm dressed. Right. Okay. Do it, do it. Can you not talk for that? We'll have time for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So can we get into more reasons why people don't go to therapy? That's a whole different. One is, I mean, we kind of touched on it, but feeling like they won't be understood, like their situation is totally unique. You know, especially just in cultural competency. Like if if I go to a white person for therapy, I'm not gonna I'm gonna feel like they're not gonna understand my plight. You know what I mean? Because they're not black. So so a lot of people, a lot of black people really do think like that. Well, are we talking about black folks? Or are we just talking yeah, about people we thought we were general? just talking about people in general. I mean, oh, there are a lot of people. That is true. We can talk. But that's we can talk true. cultural background. We can talk gender. We can talk all that's those true. different facets. I mean, we've touched on that before in a previous show mm-hmm. about stigmas that Black people alone have about going to therapy, which is would be very easy to make the list ten points longer. Just in my oh, head, yeah. off top. Absolutely. Uh, but some people still don't think therapy okay. works. Okay. So that's the other that, thing. Okay. The, so uh, there is a one. Okay. Right. That ties into what right. I was bringing up with instant gratification. So what you're saying, what you're saying. These all tie in together. Right. Oh, they won't understand. Uh, therapy may not work. And then we are looking for instant gratification. And that comes back to the point that I made on the news show when uh, the, the guy that interviewed me, Jason, said, well, what do you think this mental health stigma is all about? And I told him, you just got to stop there. I, I, this really irritates me that we're talking about a stigma, stigma, stigma. You all have mental health issues. You all have them. You either have them under control or you don't. So we can stop looking at it as this person has mental health issues and there's a problem with this person. No, you have them. You have all of them, but you have them under control right now. And when they're not under control, you need to talk to somebody. So when we're looking for instant gratification uh, with the gym, people look at us like we're insane. The trainer is like, listen, bottom line, minimum a month, two months before you see results. Stop coming to our offices and searching the web thinking that you're going to find somebody that suits you and see them for two sessions and everything is going to start falling into place. That doesn't always happen. I, I've had I've had a few to actually come in my office and come one time and swear up and down that they're fixed. Oh, like, like you're the it. best therapist. Like, I got it. Like, the oh. light bulb went off. Great job, brother. You know? I only needed to spend like, $75 and, 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 one time to get that. Thank yeah, you. If that's the case, I should be like the richest person in the world right now. Write a book. Right. You know what I mean? Like, But that's just what we tell ourselves. Just like right. I told myself I right. didn't have time for a long time. And then it was not as affordable. And one of my friends said to me, why can't you just have two sessions with somebody and then go to your own session? And I said, look, that's not the point. You know, the point is, you know, I couldn't come up with the real point. The point was right. I just didn't want to go. So I don't have a problem with admitting that. But it took somebody to break down. Don't you, like, make this in, like, an hour and a half? And right. I'm like, look. You mind your damn business. I don't feel like going right now. I don't really want to say that. I don't feel like spending the money I just made. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's time. But now that I'm back down that path, I'm really glad that I'm investing that in my own wellness. We got to change the imaging, right? The imagery around mental health is part of the issue. Right? My bad. I'm Uh sorry. I just talked. Uh So let me just say this, right? Even with Jay Z, Charlemagne. Kevin Love, uh, DeMar DeRozan, right? All of these individuals that are coming out saying, I go to therapy, yeah. right? Because it's seductive right? to talk about it. Because, it, because it's become cachet, mm-hmm. right? It's become yeah. sexy. It's yes, become, everyone's going. No, and, and I'm not saying that they're doing it to, mm-hmm. for, for that reason. Right. What I'm saying right. is now it's been put into a different... The, the face of it is starting to look a little different. Well, mm-hmm. so, the, so the imagery around it is going to start looking mm-hmm. different, right. right? Think about what we, what the imagery about mental health used to look like. Mm-hmm. It Straight used to jackets. look like, exactly, Dark. straight jackets, institutions that 
excuse me, people Sorry. thought were, oh, yeah. you know, not very nice places. Right. Four point restraints where they put your, your limbs, you know, they tie your limbs to the bed, things like that, right? Yes. Sharp Movies. Beams. And their families just own right? right. Yeah. So that's the imagery mm -hmm. that people see and they don't associate themselves with that. Right. That's not what this looks like for me. Absolutely. Guess what? That's not what it looks like for most people. Very right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Period. It's it's not what it looks like for most people. Mm -hmm. So, we have to do a better job of awareness. And awareness is just not May. Absolutely. Right? Ameri we saying that. It's like mental health is like Black History Month. <laughs> right? It's just not right. February. Right. It's just not May. Right. Okay, <laughs> it's just not February. It's just not May. Right. Yes. It's every month. It's every day. Mm -hmm. It's every year. Every mm -hmm. minute. So every minute. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the way we need to treat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we need to understand what Jaqueline was saying over here. Mm -hmm. He's calling me Jaqueline on purpose. Shout out to Kim Peel, Jaqueline, A. A. Ron. I'm sorry. A. A. Ron. But listen, oh my God. the idea is we all have issues that everybody has mm -hmm. been depressed, mm -hmm. has been anxious, yes. right. right? You may not have been clinically depressed, mm -hmm. but you've dealt with mm -hmm. having a mood that's less than favorable, mm -hmm. that yes. we call in most circles depression, depression. or being depressed. Right. It's depression. Right, so let's not, we all have thoughts that we say, oh my goodness, I can't afford to let somebody know I was thinking that way. Like they may think that I'm crazy. Knock it off. We all have a new We all thoughts. thought that. Yeah, yeah, knock it off. Right. We're not as different as, as we would like to think we are. Right. So, with that being said, we have to change the message, the imagery, the understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we normalize it because I don't like using that word, mm -hmm. right? But we have to make it acceptable and create a space for people to talk. So you use the term acceptable versus normalizing. Yeah, because what's what normal? With, well, I want you to explain why you don't want to use the word normalizing well, because I don't necessarily, I kind of wish I had a better term, but I find mm -hmm. myself using it. Because I think it sets a standard. Oh, right? my behavior. So it sets a standard act. of how you okay. should behave, mm -hmm. which okay. means you're now comparing yourself, which is what socially we do. And we understand what social norms are, right? Mm -hmm. And we make those things acceptable. Right. And if you're right. outside of what those things are, then something, someone instantly thinks that something Something's is wrong. wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? There's nothing wrong necessarily with the system. Yeah. It's you. And now you're comparing yourself to it. And guess what? In a lot of areas or some areas you can't measure up. Mm -hmm. And then now we've now we create these norms on social media. And now everything's out of whack. Because yeah. now we're consistently comparing ourselves to what other people are doing. You always push us. You always push us to a different direction, but it's a good reason. No, no, but, I want to talk about, no, well, but, but he's the, saying something good there. With you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because people get on that's this the and they compare themselves. That there yeah. are, well, that's the problem, and it goes back to an old show about whether social, social media, media is negative, having negative or positive right. effects mainly on your mental health, and that is, it's that's where comparison. it is right there. Because there are norms. There are social yeah. norms, so we get on there looking for normal. Oh, we're taking a family photo every month for a family calendar. We're all matching outfits. Your, we need this. Your perspective before you got mm -hmm. to social media mm -hmm. lends itself to your mental issues. Yeah. Because I have a perspective. So when I look on social media, it does not shake me. You know, I don't feel like, oh man, I'm missing out. Right. Because such and such was. But you never feel like that. that. You're a different type of person, Dr. Dunn. Yeah, but but, but but the but that speaks to my point, well, right? And, right. Too. and I didn't just get here, mm -hmm. right? I, I understand myself. I understand the importance of having a perspective, my perceptions and how mm -hmm. they impact my behavior. Right. Things like that. All things that you can learn from us in a therapeutic setting that thing and process. Not. Right, you definitely point. can do that. Mm -hmm. um, but the perspective that you have before you got here will drive you in a couple of directions. Okay. Yeah. Mentally. Because you spend all day right. comparing yourself to other people. I'm not living. Ah, oh, man. You know? She's it's, living her it's, best it's life. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and so you just got to learn how, well, you can go somewhere. See someone that looks like us to help you kind of reel yourself in. If you're looking for a good therapist in Charlotte, there are three sitting in front of you right now. 
You can find all of us on Psychology Today. That plug is not shameless. <laughs> that is real information. And In real time. Happen. Yeah. I definitely appreciate yeah. it. For sure. But also, I mean, I guess we, we're we at a spot where we're actually shutting it down. Um, I think that was a good, great conversation that needed to be had and even more conversations that need to be had in regards to, you know, people that look like us not accessing the resources that we do have available, but also understanding there, that there are gaps. There are like mm -hmm. huge gaps in treatment, mm -hmm. you know, from federal and state funded programs to private insurance. It, it's, it's a huge gap in between those two. Mm -hmm. And we're definitely going to touch on that, um, touching on just accessing and raising awareness regarding mental health outside of May. So this is okay. going to continue. So, um, but definitely we have some great things coming up, you know, within the next couple of weeks. Jack, what, what we got? We got a couple things. You tell us, Damien. Isn't there something coming up next week? Next Wednesday? Oh, yeah. The event? But before next Wednesday. Oh, what's happening I'm, I'm next actually, um, I was invited to do a panel um, in July, but I'll be on another radio station um, next Tuesday. Dope. Mm -hmm. um, at 10 a.m., so I'll post that information because we're on the radio right now and it may be okay, a little conflict. Yeah, so I'm not gonna say that right the second, yeah, but- Yeah, okay. the name of the radio station, <laughs> okay. but I was just gonna keep it nah, in my mind. Nah, 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 I, nah, I, I, nah, I, I was ready to say, the comments know. shared by Damien not shared of everyone. No, nah, we are not gonna do that. We we're gonna we're gonna okay. respect Power 104.4 because okay. they providing us this platform, you know, to give y'all this information. But also, I mean the, the biggest thing for next week for sure, we're gonna have the couch live on location. Um here in Charlotte, 360 Lounge in the university area. Um we're gonna have an awesome dope time. Uh, we're gonna have a particular topic but we're also gonna have some live entertainment, poetry, singing, some live music. So it's gonna be a dope time, for sure. What time is this next well, week? This is gonna start like at eight. 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 It starts at eight. It's gonna go from eight to, is eight it to 12. It's free. You know our people. It's gonna be it's some Erica Badu. Yes. If you do. Yes. Love Jones. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, so we're going, to, we're, we're going to do couch. We're going to do the couch live. Okay, the couch live. Nine. I hope y'all all come out. Yes. Eight to nine. I eight, want eight all of nine. our viewers to come out if you can in Charlotte. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Then after that, you know, you got the live music. You're gonna have the singers. You're gonna have the food. You're gonna have, you know, whatever your favorite beverage is. Go ahead okay. and indulge. Have a good time. Converse, network. Let's have a good time out there. Don't worry, they're gonna have a flyer for it. You know how you get those flyers that they put ah. in the front of your windshield. Yes. We about to flood the streets with those, the glossy flooding jokes. It. Flooding it. Open bar from 11.59 to 12. To 12. <laughs> Are you going to be in town One next week? One minute. I am in town If next you're week. in town next week. I'm in town next week. I would hope to see you at the live event. I am in town next week. Wednesday, we 8 to 9, to right? I hope to see you at the live I'm event. I'm coming through. Wednesday, Wednesday 8 to 9. And I'm going to be, I'm gonna be dressed to the nines. No, you're you know not. what I'm saying? I'm a, a, a three-piece suit see, on. If you so, see a black man at our event dressed in a Nike outfit and Jordans, and you can see his ass. Hey, listen. Right? His name is Dr. Kendall Jasper, and he's coming Nike, as he is. Nike has and is very good to me. Thank you, Nike Corporation. So, oh, so. But come, come at. Thank you, Nike. Have a great time. Nike come Blaine. on out. I love For you, sure. <laughs> Carlton the Bows. I love you, brother. Um, Nike, uh, Nike, we are interested. Hey, I mean, we're here, like you know. Uh, I got on Nikes right now. We want to be comfortable. You know, I hey, appreciate you all. I like shameless. it. I like it a lot. Shameless begging. No, no, I'm, it's not. It's not I shameless am, for me. No, I am. I want to. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do it. <laughs> hey, I Jasper looks some. comfortable when I see him. Yeah, I'm comfortable. So I think I am here. The following week, I'm in Atlanta. Okay. Doing some work down there. I'll send you okay. a text in a few days to remind you, and then yes. the day before the event, I'll send you another one. So, you know so, how I do. So definitely come on out, 360 Lounge, next Wednesday. We, we won't be live at 5 o'clock next week. We'll be going live at 8, eight. from 360 Lounge. The, the show is sponsored by uh, E-Love. It's an uh, internet radio station on, on Connected. I'm um, definitely giving him a shout out and appreciation for him allowing us you know, to utilize our platform. Mm -hmm on that particular evening. So you guys come on out, have a good time, come network, come come meet your favorite therapist. You know what I mean? Come come chop it up with us. 
you know, we're, we're, we're known people. We like to have fun too. So it I, is what it is. I have one last thing to say, and I mean this, and I, every, every show, podcast from here on out, here's what I want, here's what I would like to happen. I would love for all of the therapists across the country to reach out, right? We need to expand our web beyond psychology today right. or um, some of the other engines that are being used because mm -hmm. technology will allow us instantly to be able to say when I get a message, I get a DM, I get an email, mm -hmm. I can go directly to my Rolodex, my, my, you know, my mm -hmm. digital Rolodex. Mm -hmm and say I have someone or multiple people in your area right. that I have vetted, right. that I have talked to, that I'm gonna refer you to. Now you don't have to just choose that okay. one person and I want you to mm -hmm. talk to, to them, but we need to know that each other are out yeah. there. Okay, so let's start with this. So this is what we're gonna start with, piggybacking off of that. If you are watching right now or you're gonna watch this playback later, please tag any therapist that you know. Please. No matter where they live, what state they're in, it doesn't matter. We want to start a new stretch and broaden the horizon starting Absolutely. on the show yes. of who we know and who's in our network. Yes. We can tag them, filter them the same information about the show yeah. so that they can help filter more people. Good, Dr. Jazz. And, and this so live, he and is this, useful in his this, 90th This live approach. and this video has been shared in multiple platforms yes, it has. Mm -hmm. um, across the country, whether it's Charlotte Therapist, you know, shout out to that group. Um, therapists and I think it's like Therapists International or Counselors International. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I, I, I share it like okay. every week, like any post that we have. So I'll make sure that everyone that's connected with myself or connected with you is able to get the information. And, you know, like you said, like let, let's bridge that gap. Okay, you know? so it's going to start with us. So I'm going to start tagging a couple people I know who are not in Charlotte off the top of my head. And so you guys are going to have to post something. You're going to have to tag somebody after the show. Yeah. Who you know. Tag okay. a therapist. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a new hashtag. Tag a therapist. Tag a therapist. Hashtag, hashtag, tag a therapist. Tag hashtag therapist. a therapist. And Boom. if you use it, that's copyright infringement. Copyright we infringement. We you want heard the it bag. first. We coming for the bag. The hashtag use on the couch. That's how we make our money. Not doing therapy. The by suing the people who engage Obviously, in copyright infringement. someone infringed. has a problem with railroading. I want my bag. Right. And that is what you don't know about Hashtag a therapist. But it's out now. Hashtag the word hashtag a therapist. Got him. Hashtag hashtag a therapist. <laughs> Got him. Got him. <laughs> it's my man's though. Well, for sure, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate you guys, you know, listening in, you know, comments, all those things. We definitely appreciate, you know, the Couch Fam, Dr. Jasper, for definitely blessing us today. You know, again, a huge shout out to Jackie and and her, you know, debut. On, on Fox and you know what I'm saying she got her hey. spotlight hey that's what we do we spotlight each other that's that's what we do and and you as well yeah thank, for sure thank y'all for having me I think this is amazing y'all do great y'all do great work that's I'll, God bless you that ain't what I was doing <laughs> God bless you from Reverend Park Child how you doing <laughs> Reverend Deacon Dr. Yeah, Jones we like to change that jingle so yeah. we go further with it folks fold in let the church say amen Preach. Hey, we about I to pass around can't. the collection plate Absolutely. for sure. The building fund is never all at the top. The building fund ain't a doorknob on the church. They never fill it all the time. Ain't a doorknob for seven yeah. years. The building yeah. fund is, has been 13 been years. They never filled it all the way up to the top. We like at 96%. When are we going to get that other 4%, y'all? Hey, second. go ahead and do, donate that other 4%. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate it. Okay. For sure. But that one, we're going to check y'all next week. Live for sure. at 8 o'clock. Live at 360 Live. 360. Come out, come, come out. Come out. Enjoy some good music. You know, some good poetry. You know, if, if you can <laughs> do a little something, hey, you might be able to get on the mic too. Do a little Express something. Yourself. Say a little something. Be there, be square. Yeah, your mental health matters. Come on, you're old That's enough to keep do. going. Go ahead. Nah, Give us some more. <laughs> me and my man. <laughs> we, we doing a mob deep performance. Yeah, man. We both have it. Hey, we might do some karaoke. Hey, oh. that's that's really a good. If we do karaoke, we should, I have a dope karaoke record. Do you really? Yes. What is it? I'm not going to tell oh, you now. Is it Earthland Fire? No, not is it cool in the game? Hey, no. Karaoke is dope. Is like, get on it. Five years of your life. Get, get on it. I don't man. even remember music from the first five years of my life, but it's all good. But it's not any of those. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with Earthland Fire or, or <laughs> Cool me. in the Game. 
But this trap karaoke record I got. Trap karaoke? Yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah. Is it, um, is it, what's that song? What's that song that you put me on to? Which one? No, no, this ain't Shaq West. We ain't doing Mo Bamba. Shout out to my little man, Mo Bamba. Oh, yeah. Jasper was like, you gotta hear this. You gotta hear this You're telling people too much about me, Jack. Nah, it's the, hey, it ain't the Mobama. We about to go before we spill all the Dr. Exactly. Jones information. We not I'm doing gonna that. hold it up. We not hey, doing that. We gonna I'm see gonna y'all, man. It it's been real. We gonna holler at y'all. Thanks for doing your, it. Your mental health matters. Can we talk? We gonna do all Hashtag that. Hashtag tag a therapist. Hashtag tag a therapist. Hashtag. Hashtag. No, is it hashtag hashtag? It's hashtag. I was trying to help us end on that note. Hashtag hashtag a therapist. It's hash browns. Mm. Tag you done made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> scattered and smothered scattered and smothered and <laughs> chunked nah we don't want the chunk this is turning into the boys locker room yes, absolutely are you gonna hey. hit the